let's just review here. Like I said, this is like a map. Each one of these lines are streets. This obviously means east. This obviously means north. So it's a regular old map like we're used to, right? And what I said is I live in the greenhouse. You live in the red house. And I want you to give me directions how to get to your house. And then I'm being very specific, right, about what, I, what I'm looking for here. I said basically fill in the blanks. You would say something like, go some number of blocks in some direction. Then you'd say, then go a certain number of blocks in another direction. What did you guys get for this? Go how many blocks? Three east. Three blocks east. Then you go? Five, five blocks north. Five blocks north. Okay. So, could yes. Could the other way, too. You could have. We could have. By convention, and they, they, we're in a math class. It should be obvious, like, we, this is a point on the plane, obviously, right? This is the point three comma five. I, and you, so you could, so another way of saying that is, I live at three comma five. Okay. And, uh, that's, that's exactly the same, like this statement right here, go three blocks east, then go five blocks north. It's the same thing as saying, I live at point three five. Or, as a vector. You could say, I live at 3, 5. And that kind of gives you an idea of a vector that you could take to go in that direction, right? The, the, like, if you had a vector you drew from here to there, that would be the vector 3, 5. It would be the same information. And like I said before, vectors and points are kind of the same thing, pretty much, except for some, some abstract stuff. You could think about them the same way. It's just we, when we think about a vector, we usually think about it as going from the origin out and there's some kind of arrow. But whatever, all of this information kind of means the same thing, okay? Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> Let's forget about naming these something else. There's, if we're talking about vectors, there's another way that we could have described our direction here. One way of doing that would be to say, you know what, let's get let's get our direction vectors. Let's let's make a vector in the direction of stuff. So obviously this being a math class, we're thinking about this direction first. By convention, we take this direction first. And we could say, well, here's a vector. And what we could do is we could name that vector something. And why don't we name it E for east? We could say this is the east vector. Now, of course, it's a vector, so it could have been anywhere, right, on the plane. But we're drawing it here, which makes it unique. It makes it, you know, it, it kind of ties it to one specific point. But the thing is, it gives you a direction, right? It defines the direction east. You do the same thing with north. You notice how long these vectors are? How long? How long is this vector? It's a. It's ma there. You go. Thank you. Its magnitude is one. Now that's really, really useful here, because this information that's contained right here, or contained right here, or contained right here, can now be expressed as a sum of vectors. So, in other words, when I say go three blocks east, what you're imagining is you're, you you take this unit vector, unit vector is a vector that's one unit long. Any vector that's one unit long is called a unit vector. You can take this unit vector and then just multiply it by it, the distance, right? So in other words, three blocks east, go three blocks east means go here, right? Go that far, right there. That vector right there would be three times e, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Right, that's what you do. To, to stretch the magnitude of a vector, you multiply it by a number bigger than zero. And since we're going to three, and notice, like, like I happen to be, I happen to live, or you have, whoever of us lives here, happens to live, like, on an intersection. But if you had been at, at let's say, pi, so 3.1415, blah, 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 you would just take pi and multiply it by there, and it would stretch you out to pi, right? 
or the square root of 2, which lives right here somewhere, you could just take e, multiply it by the square root of 2, and you would get to there, right? Now, okay, so, so basically I'm giving you directions. I'm saying go three units, or go three times this vector. And I don't have to tell you what direction. Like that right there is, the, the direction is defined by that. And so we go there. Then go five in the direction of the n vector. This would be 5n right there. And so we would say plus 5 times n. And now you're just adding vectors together, right? Now, I've drawn this to scale. I literally drew it to scale. Um, what is e as a vector? e is what comma what? Look at it. E1, e2. It's what? Oh, one, one. One, one. Oh, one, no, zero. zero. One, one, zero, right? Yeah, because where does it go? It goes to the point. Its tip is at the point one comma zero. And so that's the vector, one, zero. What about N? N is three, what? Five. It's what? Three, five. N? Wait, no, no, no. N, this, zero, not five times N. Zero, one. Yeah. Zero, zero, one, right? Because that, the, that point on the plane is zero comma one. Now, let's just see what happens. I multiply that through and what do I get? Three, zero. Three comma zero. What, when I multiply that through, what do I get? Five, one. Wait, oh, zero, five. Zero, five. zero, five, right? Uh -oh. Yeah, it jumps over, multiply by zero, stays zero. Jump over, multiply by five, you get five. Which is what? When I add those vectors together, three, what do five. I get? Three, comma. Whoa! All right. Now. Everybody with me on that? Thus far. Yeah. Okay. So now what I'm about to say has nothing to do with this class. Okay? What we're about to say right now, you don't need to worry about, like, remembering this stuff. Um, but I want you to see it. It's going to tie some stuff together. Now. Oh. Let's do this. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken the grid out, okay? But I've left some interesting points. This point is where the greenhouse is, okay? And I didn't do a point where the red house was, so let's see. It was at 3, 5, so I'm going to go over. So there's the origin. 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to go up five. One, two, three, four, five. And that, this point here, is where the red house is. Do you agree with me that this is the same distance and direction as this? Yes. Right? Okay. Here's this. This is where it's going to get interesting. What if, what if the streets didn't look like this? Like here this is a perfect grid, right? Everybody's exactly a square one by one and stuff like that. There's no city in the United States that looks like this, right? Actually, well, Phoenix is, looks a lot like this, but my point, right? Nothing's exactly like one mile by one mile and nothing's exactly horizontal and vertical. Things just don't do that. What if, so here's my question to you. Let's say that the streets were laid out differently. I want to get one more point here. Give me just a second. Oops. There. There we go. One, two, three. To that guy. What if the streets looked like this instead? So let's take a look here. Let's do it like this. Like a real city, let's suppose that the streets were laid out like this. I'm just going to let you ponder this for a minute. You'll notice the way I've drawn this, these, are, these, these streets aren't even at right angles to each other. 
pretty close because of the stuff, the, the points I chose. But here's the thing. Let's say that the streets look like this. Now, of course, we're going to need to define new directions. And just for, for, for whatever's sake, let's just call this direction A. And let's call this direction B. Now, you can see uh, this, is my, this, is, this is a little bit different. And if, now, if the streets look like this, and I wanted to, you wanted to tell me how to get from my house to your house, you would say, go how many blocks in what direction? So wait a minute, go blank blocks, BLX will be blocks. Two blocks, okay. One second, yeah, in what direction? Then blank blocks in what direction? So you said how many? Two blocks, A. Yeah, you'd go two blocks, a, so instead of east, it would be A, whatever the direction A is. And then we'd go how many blocks? One block B. One block in the B direction. Again, instead of just naming these as directions, what we could do is, here's your, here's your $5 word for the day. We're going to hear it a lot. We're going to come up with a basis for this. So you have one coordinate system. And in this coordinate system, it makes perfect sense to say, you know what, like the unit of eastern motion is this guy right here, right? And the unit of northern motion, also southern motion, right? Because you just go negative to go south. Ditto negative this to go west, right? But it makes sense that we would, set, that we would define our entire grid or our entire neighborhood or our entire space based on these two vectors. Because it makes sense, right? And it's really super easy. If you're at three, three comma five, well, it's like that. It's easy to decompose this and put them in terms of that. It's also easy if you have it in terms of these vectors to find the point, right? In this coordinate system, in this neighborhood, that's not going to help you, right? While it may be true that if you do go three units this way and five units this way, it doesn't make sense to actually give your directions that way. Because in this coordinate system, that basis, this is called a basis for that coordinate system, that basis doesn't make any sense. So we're going to define a new basis. And why don't I do that by saying, let's just call this the origin here. And we'll say one of these here, we'll call that the basis vector A. Then we'll go one in this direction. And we'll call this the basis vector B. And so now, these directions that you just gave me make perfect sense. And I could say, and in this basis, you could even say, I live at... 2 comma 1 in this basis because it makes sense. You, that, that means you go two blocks in this direction, one block in this direction. And so now we have new coordinates for our new coordinate system. But check this out. This is what's really cool. 2 in the a direction plus 1, I'm not going to bother to write the 1, in the b direction. Now what you didn't see is when I was measuring this stuff out, I went this was a total of two units. This is a total of one unit. So A is what vector? It's root five. It's what? No, 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 no. Be the right. two, This is one. two, one, right? Yeah. And B, I went one unit in that direction and three units in that direction. So what would B be? Negative one, one. Three. Negative one comma what? Three. Three. Now watch what happens. I'm going to multiply this through, and I get what? Four, Four two. Four comma two plus What's negative one comma three, three which, gives which us is three, five. three comma five. It's the same point, but it's expressed now in new coordinates. What this is here is a, we, we have, this is what you call a change of basis. 
We've taken our old coordinate axes and our old coordinate system, our old grid, our old neighborhood, and we've converted it into a new coordinate system, a new basis for this space. It's the same space. It's still the same vector describes how you get from point A to point B, but in this coordinate system, it has new coordinates. Now, what is this? So one, one thing, I said before that later on in this class, we're like, and I've said this 10, you know, 20 times, is why I didn't bother saying it right now. One way of telling me where to, how to get to my, from this house to this house is three units east, five units north. Another way would be to just take this vector, three comma five, and say, well, whatever angle this is, right? We've talked about this before. If we didn't live in a city, right? If there were no city blocks and we lived in the country and we had nothing but a field between us, I would say, go this many degrees from east and then walk this much to get there. We're going to do that in this class. This thing, though, you will not see until you take linear algebra. And if you remember what I've said about linear algebra, that has to do with matrices. In fact, it's vectors and matrices. You might look at that and think, Where's the connection there with the matrix? Allow me to do what I want to do. Let's check this out. So I'm going to get rid of this for right now. Let's, but let's do remember these very specific vectors, 1, 0, and 0, 1. I will from now on refer to them as the basis vectors. And some other things too. But that's, like, that's, we're, we're going to come back to that. But check this out. Okay, so what was the problem that we're trying to figure out here? So, like, here's the thing. is like we have some coordinate system. And in a sense, what, I'm try what I was trying to do was figure out how do I express the point in our old coordinate system, 2 comma 3, how do I write that as coordinates in my new coordinate system? In this case, it was easy because we have our coordinate system. And it happened to be that the point that we cared about ended up on an intersection. But what if it was like here? Or what if it was here? Or what if the coordinate, what, what if like the coordinate was way out there and you're trying to draw? You're not going to sit there and draw things out and figure out, oh, how far is this to here to here? Nobody's going to do that. This is how you do it. You would say, well, my bit, this, this is the idea. Is like, we knew that the coordinates over here were two and one. So we said it's two in this direction and something in this direction. But if we didn't know what those coordinates were, if we wanted to find them out, we'd say, well, it's some number in, this co uh, uh, in that direction plus some other number, we don't know what it is, in that direction. And that would give me the point that I'm looking for, which in this case was 2 comma 5. Sorry, that's, or no, 3 comma 5. Right? That's where my house was? Or that's yeah, that, yeah. those are the directions to get to your house? Or my house, right? House. Yeah, Somebody's right house. house, right? And so what you, this is what you do. You'd say, well, I, I need to find these coordinates. They turn out to be 2 and 1. But I, I don't know how to get them. But I, I do know that it's going to be, so, even if it's like right here, you're going to say, well, it's some distance in the A direction. I don't know what it is. It's something, this distance, whatever it happens to be, is X times A. And then it's some distance in the B direction. I don't know what it is. It's B I'm sorry, I don't know what it is. It's some number, call it y times b, and those together will give me the coordinates that I care about. And that's what I'm doing here. Does everybody follow me with that? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what I did here, but I happened to know what x and y were because it happened to just show up at an intersection. It was easy. And you're not always, and it's going to be a total waste of time to actually draw this out. You could imagine. If give, I give you any two vectors, you're going to try to draw a grid like this. You saw how long it took me to draw this. Yeah. You're not going to do that. 
This is what you're going to do. You're going to say, well, I have some coordinate system. It's some number times A, some number times B. And so let's just do that. In this case, A was the vector 2 comma 1. And B was the vector you told me minus 1 comma 3. Minus 1 comma 3. And that should give me the point 3 comma 5. Okay, rules for vectors. What do I do with that x? And that gives me, let's just call it 2x and x. Now what about the y? Negative y. Negative y, Negative y and 3y. 3y. Now watch this. This is interesting. Oh, wait. I can ah, now, we have, we're talking about two separate points. So it's the case. Now, oh, let's, 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 let's do it one more time. Now we can add these two vectors together, and it should give me 3 comma 5. And what is this first entry? 2x minus y, and then x plus 3. x plus 3y. Now watch this. So in other words, whatever this is, has to be that thing, right? Oh, Those yeah. x coordinates have to be the same. And then, whatever this is has oh, to be that so thing. So the y coordinates, so we have two equations. You can use a matrix. Ha oh, ha, you could use a matrix to solve it. And we get x plus 3. We have a system of equations. And look, it, so, so this is, and as you've seen before, in our class, what we did last year is we would get this and we'd turn it into what's called an augmented matrix. And it would look something like this. And we would go through and solve it. But in linear algebra, what you're going to do is say, well, hold up. If we think about this as a vector itself, this x, y, Right, you're talking about what's what's the core. We know that the x y here. This is this vector. This is the vector x y that we're looking for. Right, the two is the two. I'll make that a vector like that. Right, the two we knew it's two in this direction. The one is in one, that one direction. So what this really is is check this out. There's rules for multiplying vectors and matrices, and like I said before, you usually write your vectors as columns here. And the rule here is this, 2 minus 1, 1, minus 1, 3. The rule is that this gets multiplied here, that gets multiplied there. You see, I just like pulled it off, right? <laughs> you see, I took the x and the y out and kind of flipped them that way. Yeah. The rule is that's how you multiply, that this gives you that. That's the rule for multiplying vectors and matrices. So that the x comes in here and gives you 1x, the y goes in there and gives you 3y. The x goes in there and gives you 2. Also, look at this. That's that vector. Right? 2, 1 is that vector. Minus 1, 3 is that vector. What this is, so you could think about a matrix as a change of basis. A change of coordinate systems here. You're kind of saying, here's this wicked coordinate system that's weird for whatever reason, and I gave you a reason why you might want to use it. What if your blocks are lined up like this? Or in the world of like x-ray crystallography, if you're looking at, if you're looking at minerals and you're you know, looking at their, their, their atomic structure, stuff looks like this. And it might make a lot more sense to describe things in terms of this coordinate system than another coordinate system. Also cryptography, they use stuff like this. They use crazy coordinate systems to encrypt stuff. And if you could find how far it is in this coordinate system, you could decrypt the thing. So there's lots of reasons why you might want to do this. But what this is, and everything that we were doing, so last year we kind of thought about this as, well, these are two lines, right? We could solve that and you get y equals 2x minus 3. The other one, you bring the y, blah, 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 blah. And you could say, well, that's like, where do these two lines intersect? And you'd find it's at the point 2, 1 is where those lines intersect. But another way of thinking about it is, that this whole setup here is a change of basis between coordinate systems. Where if you put a 2 and a 1 in here, and if you solve this, you will find that x equals 2 and that y equals 1. If you want to go home and do that, have at it. But you'll find that if you do put a 2 and a 1 in here, right, which is the same thing as 2 times 2 minus 1 times 1, equals 4 minus 1 is 3. 
2 times 1 plus 3 times 1 is 2 plus 3 is 5. Yes, indeed, it does work. You'll find that in one system, your coordinates are 2, 1. In your other system, your coordinates are 3, 5. And what a matrix is and a system of equations is, is a change of basis. Changing from one coordinate system to another. And you could go in the, other, the opposite direction, too. If you didn't know this one, you could find the others and blah, 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 blah. I had to do that. I had to. That was that. So that's the aside. This is the stuff that you don't need to worry about right now. Was that cool? Was that, that's pretty cool, right? Like, I, I, I had to because we spent so much time doing this and this last quarter. And, and I mentioned the last time vectors and matrices are really very, very closely related. This is how. I had to show you. And when you take linear algebra, you'll do this till you. That's what, that's what it's all about. You know, I said that this class, if I were naming this class, instead of trigonometry, I would call it circles. Linear algebra, if I were naming that class, I would call it vector spaces, because that's what you learn about. Vector spaces. And like a vector space, for instance, would be any space like the plane. In our class, we're using. R2, the real, real in this direction, real in this direction, we're using that as a vector space. It's the space where vectors live. You could also do that in three dimensions. You could do it in four. You could do it in any number of dimensions. And that's what linear algebra is all about, is the transformations between those vector spaces. So moving from one coordinate system to another coordinate system. And when you do that, that could be expressed as a matrix. And so. Sometimes it's called matrix. I think at, at UW it's called matrix algebra, but more generally they just call it linear algebra. That's what you do. You so, have, what now? Can you have a negative dimension? Uh, well, I've never seen one. You but, can have infinite? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. What about you like can a half have, dimension? There are fractional dimensions. Fractals, yeah, fractals in particular, are they have fractional dimensions. Or like you know, like two point three is so homework twenty three. This is <laughs> this is gonna be rough because it's we only have two days to do it and it's quite it's a lot. Actually, it's not that bad because I knocked some stuff off. So page six hundred one numbers three, five, seven, nine, thirteen. Twenty eight is just like twenty seven. If you're like looking at 28 and you're like, oh man, I'm not sure. And yes, it's an even one. There's no answer in the back of the book. If you could do 27, you could probably just use an eraser and replace one symbol in there with for 28 and you get the same thing. So that's way too much information. <laughs> you guys should not have any questions about that. 29, 43, 49, 51. And 59. And the thing about 59 is you're going to look at it and go, what am I supposed to do? Well, above, like, there's a little block, right? 59 is, like, at the bottom. Look up the, the ones, and then there's a big block of bold text. And the bold text says, in exercises 57 through 60, do blah, 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 blah. So that's what it is. If you just look at it by itself, because you went to 51, then you jump to 59 and you look at it, you're going to go, okay, thanks, nice picture, but it tells you what to do just above it, okay? Okay. Okay. So I want to go back and talk about these two very, very, very important vectors. What were they? Do you remember what they were? We called them east and west earlier. What were they? Zero, one, and one, zero. Yeah, one, zero, and zero, one. And I said these are basis vectors. These are basis vectors, which are also unit vectors. Because how long? How long are they? One, one. They're, they're, both, they're both one unit long, so they're unit vectors. They're basis vectors for R2. R2, we talked about, is the plane, but considering it as a vector space, we call it R2. These have very special names, and you're going to hate me for this. This one is called I hat, and this one is called J hat. 
Yes, that's that's what's going. This little this thing is called hat. <laughs> Didn't we do something with I hat and J hat? Maybe we may have. We may have. We might have seen I hat and J hat before. But notice that that's for R two. What do you think it might be for R three? How many? First off, how many vectors do you think we're going to need for three dimensional space? Three. We're probably going to need three. And what do you think they might be? K hat? Yes, yes. So it's going to be I hat, J hat, and K hat. What do you think the entries are for I hat? One, one zero, zero, zero. One. What about this one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zero, one, zero. There you go. And what's this one? Zero, zero, zero one. There you go. And right? Go. And, there, and those are just in the directions of X, Y, and Z. So we usually put our X right here. We usually put our Y right here. We usually put our Z right here. And then I hat would be one unit in this direction. J hat would be one unit in this direction. And K hat would be one unit in this direction. And the thing is, for something to be a, va a basis, what a basis is, is that you give me any vector in that space and it could be expressed in terms of those vectors and those vectors alone. You don't need another vector to do it. So, for instance, so I'm getting rid of this because we're not in 3D in this class. Okay, but that's what it, that's the same thing. And if you were going to a, if you're going to do four dimensions, I don't know if they have special names like IJ and K hat. You probably would just use something else, something easier. Um, but they, it's L the hat? same thing, right? It's just a one for every one of the cardinal directions, right? So one in the x direction, one, and this one's the one in the y direction. That's the one in the z that direction. Would graph and so on. <laughs> what would what? How would you graph the four dimensions? You don't. You can't. It's impossible. But what you could graph. You could graph projections of it. But what even is the fourth dimension? It's. it's it's just it's another direction that's not that way, that way, or that way. It's, it's something <laughs> else. But the same way that like you could take a three-dimensional object and project it down onto, say, a plane, and what you get is a circle, right? Like in this case, I project my sphere down onto there. What you could do is you could take a four-dimensional object and project it into three dimensions. So that's how you could graph it if you were, you could only graph parts of it the same way that somebody in 2D space could not graph a circle. They could say it's like this, you know, that's a projection of it and you could project different parts of it. You could take different slices of it, right? And you'd have different size circles as you go through, but you can't do it all at once in a dimension that's smaller than the one that you live in. And so we can't graph four dimensions. We could, we could graph projections of four dimensions down into three. But again, it's just one slice of the thing, right? It's so, yeah, we don't. So, um, I hat and J hat. Now, any vector, now your book doesn't do this, but everywhere else in the world does, that when you have a unit vector, a vector of unit length, you put a hat on it. So, for instance, let's take a vector U. And let's say it's, I don't know, give me, give me two, two whole numbers, any two whole numbers. Four. Okay. Seven. And seven. Okay. Now, that's a vector u. It's in this direction, right? And we could find, so here's the vector u, four, and we'll say this is seven. So this is the vector u. And obviously, it is longer than a unit, <laughs> right? I mean, it has to be. We could calculate what it is. I don't care. Um, actually, we will in just a second. But what we could do is we could take this vector and scale it down so that it's only one unit long. And what we could do is we could find the unit vector, u, and we would write it with a little u hat, like that. How do you think we might do that? Like, if I were to calculate, how can I make that one unit long? Multiply it by... Wait. Nope. What we have to do is divide by its magnitude. So root 65. We find, yeah, yeah. So we, we, uh, we take whatever the magnitude of u is 
and multiply it by u. And that will bring it down. So let's find the magnitude of u. So you already said it's, and I know it's square root of... 16 plus 49, which is, yeah, 65. So square, but you said is what, root 65? Yeah. Okay. So that's the magnitude of u. And now watch what happens when I multiply through by it. So I'm going to say u hat, the unit vector in the direction of u, is 1 over root 65 times 4, 7. And let's see what happens. That gives me that the unit vector in the direction of u is 4 over root 65 and 7 over root 65. Now, let's just check. Let's check the magnitude of this guy. The magnitude of u hat is going to be the square root of something squared plus something squared. The, the first something squared, I'm going to take 4 over root 65. And then this one's going to be 7 over root 65. So 16 over 65. 16 65 plus... 49 65. 69 65ths. Which is just 65. 65/65, which is the square root of 1, which is 1. Yes. That's how you do it. You'll be doing a lot of that in your homework. Okay? And it's helpful because if you want to scale a vector, it's really really helpful that you have a vector that's of unit length to turn a vector into a unit vector for a lot of reasons. Not so much like what we're going to be doing this year, but for the rest of your life, getting a unit vector is makes your life easier almost all the time. So, okay, there's that. Now, okay, now what I, I said that I and J are what we call basis vectors. This is not in your book, but this is really, really important stuff. So, it actually, this is in your book. They just, they're just not going through what I'm about to go through. Can I get rid of all this? Yeah. Okay. And you see what I did here, right? Like, u was longer, but then when you scale it down, the same thing would be true if u were shorter than one unit. Okay. If u were, right, we would, well, you'd still divide by its magnitude. Doing that would actually... Oh, but its magnitude bigger. would be less than one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. If its magnitude is less than one, you divide by it, it makes it bigger, right? So I was going to go through an example, but it's pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. So what do I mean by basis? A basis. Again, if you, when you take linear algebra, you're going to go into this in detail. So I'm not going to give you a, a good definition. We're going to think of a basis, the kind of the way that we did. It's like the coordinate, the vectors that define the coordinate axes. You usually want them to be one unit long. That helps. No, it doesn't always have to be. But the key here is that you give me any vector, and I could write it in terms of these vectors. So, for instance, let's take our old friend u that we just used, which we said was what four, seven, and I could rewrite this guy because watch what happens when I do. I could, if I were so inclined, write this as 4, 0, plus 0, 7, right? Which, if I were so inclined, I could write as 4 times 1, 0, right? Just pull out the constants here, 0, 1. And so, this vector that we're talking about could be written as 4i hat plus 7j hat. Well, let's just be 100% clear about this right now. We're in vector space. So i, which is the square root of negative 1, has nothing to do with i here, has nothing to do with j here. We don't have an i in vector space. Well, if you're in complex vector space, if the entries are complex, of course you have i's and stuff like that, but we're not dealing with that. This gives you a rule for like what to do when multiplying two of these things together. We don't have that in vector space. So we're, we're, this says this i has nothing to do with this high. It's in the wrong direction, isn't it? Like it would be j would be the thing. Yeah, but anyway. So you give me any vector in the world, and I can express it as a linear combination of these two vectors. That is a basis. That's what a basis is. Okay. And in general, let's give me give me any 
vector, we've been calling, what, what have we been doing the entries for this for, in general? We've been calling it a1. a1 and a2, a1 and a2. By the same exact logic, you could just say it's a1 times i hat plus a2 times j hat, and that means the exact same thing. Sometimes it's very useful to be able to express it like this. Very useful to write a vector like this. In this class, they are exactly the same thing. When you see this, it means exactly the same thing as this. There's no difference. And really no utility to do one or the other. Really, it doesn't matter which one you do. Later on, being able to take a vector like this and write it like this will make your life so much easier. But right now, we're not really worried about that. And it's more theoretical too. Like it's when you're trying to prove that something's true, and then you can do that and things happen and it's nice, but. Okay, so there's that. Any questions about that? It's really simple. Like this is just another way of saying this right here, okay? This is another way of writing this. This is another way of writing this. They're the same thing. Okay? Okay. Um, that was that. There's also those. Any vector can be scaled down to unit length. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's take this guy right here. And let's make this concrete. And let's just say that A1 and A2 are both positive. And so it looks something like this. Here's a1, here's a2. And so this vector looks something like this. There's our vector a. Now, let's say that we know this angle right here. Let's call it theta. This is suggestive. I'm suggesting something right here for the next question. Now, what is cosine theta? Um, a over a1 over no a2 over a1. Wait a second. No a1 so over a1 a2. over over what? A. a1 over oh, the, the vector? Root of, no, the magnitude. Root of. The magnitude of a because that's the one thing I didn't draw is that this length right here is the magnitude of a, not a itself because that's a vector. Take a number, take six, and divide it by a vector. What does that mean? There's no, we don't have vector division. So, that. So, sine theta is equal to what? Um, it would be a, a two. Two over there the magnitude of a. Oh, yeah, a two. Two over, over the magnitude of a. Okay. Okay. Now, check this out. Both of these cases, I can multiply by the magnitude. And I get that the magnitude of A times cosine theta is equal to that first entry in A. Notice A could have been anything, right? And it could have been negative. I could have drawn it over here. I could have drawn it down here. It doesn't matter. It all works, right? That's what sine and cosine do. It's like they go around the circle and everything's fine. It's just the coordinates, right? Ditto down here, I multiply with the sine, sine theta, I get a2. But if that's true, then my original a can be written as, instead of a1, I'm going to write it as a times cosine theta. And I said a2, I'm going to write it as magnitude of a times sine theta. But this is the same constant, isn't it? So well, you can pull it out, right? You can pull it out and say that a is equal to the magnitude of a times cosine theta sine theta right there. So for an a... Given, and now check this out, we're not even in coordinates anymore, are we? There's no coordinates here. Everything is in terms of thetas and magnitudes, angles and magnitudes, but it's the same thing, right? Yeah, it's the same method we use for the law of sines. Yeah, 
Yep, a lot of that. A lot of that going on in this class. Okay. So this, we will go later on. In fact, I think it's going to be the last trig thing we talk about in this class. We're going to do polar coordinates. Polar coordinates are now, you'll notice there's only two numbers that determine this vector. One is the angle, and the other is the distance. And so instead of, we could just, instead of calling it a1, a2, we could just say, well, it's the same thing as theta times, or times, this theta which we'll do later, but check that out. Every vector has this form right here as well, as long as you know. And notice what we did. We measured it from the x-axis. So if you're given something like this, and you know that that's 30 degrees, 30 degrees is not your theta, right? It has to be measured all the way around, and so it'll be 330, right? right? Okay, so questions about that? Every vector in the plane can be written like this, which if you're so inclined, you could write it like this. Same thing right there. Right? Because that means that, right? There's no difference between writing our vectors with these versus the ij form. It's exactly the same. That's one of the things that's so nice about this. It's even called the canonical basis because it's like, why would you use any other basis, right? It's so simple. But then there are reasons why you want to use another basis, and maybe you do, and that's where linear algebra comes in, but that's not the topic anymore. We're going to leave that alone. Okay? So, here we go, on the homework. Any questions on this before I get rid of it? Okay. So, homework stuff. I'm going to leave this down there because it'll be useful. Another, another, like, we didn't, uh, if we have time, we'll go back. That's, wasn't going to talk about that. Okay, so number 29 is similar to this. So this, this isn't what number 29 is, um, but it's similar to this. It gives you A is equal to negative 2 comma 2, something like that. And it tells you to find the magnitude of A. Find magnitude of A. And, and I'm writing this down so that when you see this, we'll all be on the same page. It says, and the smallest possible theta from the positive x-axis <laughs> this is what, to the vector OP that corresponds to A. Okay, that's just a lot of, that's a really terrible way of the, saying this right here. You have your vector A, it lives in this plane, it's here at minus 2 comma 2. So this is what A looks like. That's your vector A. Now what it says, find the smallest possible theta from the positive x-axis. So in other words, measuring theta from here to here to the vector OP. What they mean by O is that that's the origin and this is the point P so that A is the same thing as the vector OP, right? Remember we did that kind of thing before where you have two points and we just call it the first part, the last part. That's what they mean right there. So that's, that's it, right? Basically, your vector, you could forget about the OP. This is what they mean. Just measure that right there. And so, here's the thing. The magnitude part should be easy. 
What is the magnitude of A? How do I find it? Square root of. Square root of. Negative 2 squared plus 2 squared. Root 8. Which is root 8. Which is 2 root 2 in the back of your book. Root 8's fine for me. Okay? So, there you go. Okay, nice, easy. Now, how do we find theta? We, that's, that's one way of doing it. Um, another way for this particular one is to notice that if that's 2 and that's 2, then this has to be pi over 4. Oh. Oh. Right? Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, if it's easy, keep it easy. Which means if that's pi over 4, then theta is what? Uh, uh, three, three, 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4. And now, your book might say... 90 plus 45, whatever that is, 135? Yep, 135. It might call it 135. That's fine. Whatever. It's, it doesn't. I don't think it specifies radians or, or degrees. If at the back of the book says degrees, boom, degrees. But that's perfectly fine. Okay, that's, that's enough information to define this vector. Because you'll notice it has a length and it has a direction. Boom, that's that vector. And so now you've just converted from this type of vector into... This type of vector. What if, what if the numbers weren't the same? What if it wasn't just two and That's what I wanted to get at. So if we didn't know, the way I would suggest to do this is to say, all right, you know what? I'm going to go abstract here because I know that if I could find the reference angle, then I could find theta. And so what I'm going to do is say, okay, here's theta sub r. We know this. What's the height? And what's this? 2. Also 2. Notice I'm not using negatives here. Because this is the key. If you want to do reference angles, forget about the negatives and just find that angle. You pretend that this triangle has been taken oh. out of this, the space, and, and you just do that. Then you can just... Like, and so, now here's the thing. 2 and 2, this is, I mean, like, you know what that is, right? But what you, if you didn't know, if it were 3 and 7... What you could do is say then tangent yeah. of theta sub r. And this is the thing. Anytime you can use a tangent or arc tangent, use arc tangent. Yeah. Because it's you like could have set this up by going, well, that's 2 root 2. And so sine of theta sub then r you have is going to be 2 root, or no, 2 over 2 root 2. But then hopefully everything works out. With tangent, you don't need to worry about it. You just say that's 2 over 2, which is just 1. And so then theta sub r is arc tangent 1, which happens to be 4, right? So you know that's pi over 4. And then you could come back here and deal with pi minus whatever the data. Right. In this case, pi minus that. If it's down here, a little bit different. Right? Yeah. Right? But you'd still, I would still recommend that instead of trying to find big old theta here, you work with the reference angle there. And then you say, okay, that's what that would look like. There's theta sub r. I know this is maybe 3 and this is maybe 7. And so I could say tan of theta sub r is what over what? Yeah, 7 over 3. So that theta sub r is arc tan 7 over 3. Then you find out what that is, and you say, I'm going to add that to pi. Or if you're in one, if that's 180, you add it to 180. That's fine. And so, Victor, yeah, like we are kind of using this in the sense that like, we could have done one of them and done something with sine, but we could use both of them this way. You know, that's kind of implicitly what we're doing here, you know. Um, though, yeah, slightly different. It's good to break things down into abstract triangles that don't live on the point, or that don't live in your coordinate system to figure out little bits of the puzzle. That's how I would recommend. Questions before I erase this stuff? There's one kind of thing you're going to see. Another kind of problem.
lots of conversion between IJ format and our bracket format. That's just it's very straightforward. Um, another thing you're going to see, actually let's do the hard thing first and then we'll go into the other thing that you're going to see. So this is number 44. This I did. Good, yes, we need to do this. So, two forces act on one point. Find the resulting the resultant vector in magnitude and direction. So, here are the two forces. Force A is 70 pounds at 320 degrees. The second force is 40 pounds at 30 degrees. So let's see what's going on here, okay? Two forces are acting at one point. Here's that one point that they're acting on. One of them is 70 pounds at 320 degrees, and 320 is... It's in the fourth. Yep, it's down here somewhere. And I'm gonna draw it 70 units long. And so it goes, there's 320 right there. The other one is not as long. It's 40 pounds. Okay. And it's at 30 degrees right there. Now right away, I haven't done, very, done a very good job of drawing this, but I could still glean some information about this. So I'm imagining that we have, that we have a person sitting here on the ice, like without skates, and... They're, they're holding on to two ropes. One rope is being pulled this way. The other rope is being pulled that way. Somebody's pulling with 40, it's not degrees, that's 40 pounds of force and 70 pounds of force. I imagine that the resulting force is going to be felt in this direction. Since this one's longer than that one, and I haven't done a very good job of whatever, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that the resulting force is going to be something like this. Okay, that's, that's, that's what I'm thinking. But we, we've talked about this before. The resultant force is what you get when you add two vectors together. The best way to add vectors together is to do it in component form. Right now, we don't have components. So I'm going to call this vector u and this vector v. And what I want to do is find the components of it. And it's all right there, right? I know the magnitude is 40, so I could say then u is equal to 40 times, and now we're just kind of breaking this up, right? We could say, and it should be cosine 30, sine 30, right? And if you think about it, like what did we just do here? We just said, well, you have some theta, some magnitude, in this case it's 40, and you have this bit and this bit right here. We know that cosine theta is equal to x over 40, but how about I put the 40 up here, right? I know that sine theta is equal to y over 40, but I put the 40 up there. And look at that, that's the exact same thing we're gonna end up with when I do this. We're gonna say this is cosine, now instead of theta, I'm actually gonna do the 30, sine which is the same thing as 40 cosine 30, just 40 sine 30, okay? Right, right, that's all that is. You're just finding the, you literally just found what point this was, that point right there, by breaking it up like this. Did everybody see that? Did everybody follow that, right? That's what this formula means, that's what you're doing. And this, yes, does work out to, it should be, what, 20 and something else. So, and then 20, yeah. So, I, and I went and did this in a calculator, and you can check my work. I may have done this wrong. I got 34.64 and some other stuff, and that works out to 20. Okay, so there's you. Let's do the same thing for V. I'm not going to spend as much time talking about it.
I'm going to say V can be written as a magnitude times sine and cosine of stuff. V is the magnitude, which in this case is 70, times cosine, sine. And in this case, like I think the one I gave you is also like this, but there are other ones in there that I don't think I gave you. It might have given you like um, uh, south 20 degrees east or something like that. And then, you know, so you'd go south and then you'd go say, 20 degrees this way, but it's not 20 degrees that you're looking for, right? It's measured from the x-axis all the way around, right? And so, everybody got that? That's important. So what is it in this case? Cosine of what? 320. 320. Because it's given that way, right? Sine 320. And when you do that, you get 53,623. 53, 623, and then minus 44. And as you do this, like stop and make sure that this, this is right. Like, so for instance, for you, I got 3420. That looks right. They're both positive, right? Over here, I got 53 minus 44. That looks right. V should be, you know, that way and that way. And I notice. This one's longer than that one, right? Because both of those are longer, which yeah. means that the magnitude is longer, right? And so, yeah, that feels good. And so then the resultant force, which I'm just going to give it, I want to give it a name. I'm going to call it R for resultant. You just add them. So just add them together. So R is just U plus V, which works out to, and of course, right, we're just adding that one plus that one which gives me 88.264. Add that one and that one, and I get minus 24.995 and some stuff. Okay, so now I have R. But they didn't ask for R in component form. They asked for R. I said it, I didn't write it up there. They want it as a magnitude and a direction. Oh, yeah. Oh. So let's, the magnitude is the easy part, right? The magnitude is just what well, you just say, okay, the magnitude of R is just the square root of the 88 stuff squared plus the minus 24 stuff squared, and you get 91.735. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, Oh, it might have just asked for the, uh, no, it did, it did, I'm sorry, it does ask for the direction as well. Angle. So now, here's the hard part. This is the hard part. So we have, I'm going to draw this separately. Oh, well, we have three sides. We have three sides, but there's an even easier way of doing it. So you usually, any time, so we're trying to find an angle, and if we think about this as, a triangle, we could use arc sine, we could use arc cosine, or we could use our best friend, arc tan. The nice thing about using arc tan is that these numbers are already there. Like we could have done this one before doing any of this, right? Yeah. And you never need to worry about throwing something into arc tan, right? Arc tan is all, every real number could go into arc tan. You don't need to worry about it. The only thing you do need to keep in mind is that these, we're gonna, since we're finding a reference angle, we're forgetting about the coordinates and we're just talking about the absolute value of these things, which is 88.264, this one, 24.995. And we could say then tan of theta sub r, forgetting about the whole context of the picture, just that triangle right there, is what over what? 24.995. Two, six, four. So we take arc tan of both sides and we get arc tan of the 24.9 stuff over the 88.3 stuff and we get, I got 15.881. Well, let's look at how this was given. So if it were given in terms of south by however many degrees east, then I would want to find what this is. 
But since these were given as measured from the x-axis, I want to do the same thing. So our theta, how do I find our theta? Right 360 here. minus. There you go. Theta is 360 minus theta sub r, which works out to 340.4. Point one eight eight six. That's what I got. I may have done these wrong. <laughs> I didn't check, right? But let's but let's check. Let's just check. And I mean, not like hardcore or anything. But let's just look. Does this make sense? So the magnitude is longer than either of the other magnitudes. Which is, good. is that what we expected? Yeah. Yes. Is it heading in the correct direction? Yeah. Down. More or less qualitatively, we're pretty sure that it should be down below the x-axis. And it sure is, right? We're going 88 in this direction, 24 in that direction. That looks pretty good. I feel good about it. And so, there we go. Okay, a couple more things. I told you this is going to be a long one today. We've got, we've got a lot to do. So, I'm erasing all this. Too bad. I don't want to hear it. Stop crying. Stop crying. Okay. Now. Okay. So there's all that. More stuff to do with all this. Let's see. Um, okay. Find a unit vector in the opposite direction of a i hat minus 5j hat. So we want to find a unit vector in the opposite direction of this. Let's give this a name. Let's call it U. So be negative. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's all it is, right? And like, oh. like graphically, yeah. you could say eight in this direction, five in this direction. Okay, so there's that. Qualitatively, you know, they, by opposite, they just mean like you literally make it negative, right? And so we're talking about the vector minus 8, um, a positive 5, or just multiply it through. And so let's call it V is then, should be minus 8 plus 5J, okay? Easy, easy enough. But that's not a unit vector. How do we get a unit vector? What do I have to do to it? Uh, divide by the magnitude. Divide by the magnitude. Divide by the magnitude. And what is the magnitude? Uh, root 64 plus 25. Which is what? <laughs> I have oh, 89. Yeah, that's what I got. All right, nice. How do you just do that? Uh, got it. Okay, so I just divide each one of these by it, right? And that should do it. And so I'm going to call it V hat. V hat is 8 over root 89 I hat plus 5 over root 89 J hat. And if you want, I mean, you could you could write it like this. I don't care. They're the same thing. Unless it explicitly tells you to write it in I hat, J hat form, I don't care. And they don't, yeah, and they're not calling it I hat, J hat. They just, they're just bold, just like all the other vectors. They don't bother to put arrows or anything like that. They just make it bold. It's I hat and J hat. Trust me on this. The rest of your life is going to be I hat and J hat. And K hat. Um, okay, so, yep, that's it, that's the unit vector, and it's opposite, okay. Now, how would you find a vector in the same direction, three times the magnitude? Just multiply it by three. Just multiply by three. Yeah, just, it, wait, which, which unit, one? Find the unit vector and multiply that. You know, that's what I did, right? I was like, oh, okay, find the unit vector. So you go through, you find the unit vector, got it. Now you take that and multiply it by three, but it's not by three. That would be three times a unit vector. That would be a vector that is three units long. That would be one of three. So what you would want to do is take, so, so think about three times the original magnitude, right? What you'd have to do is this. You'd have to say, well, this is this. Right, that's what we have, right? We, that's what we've done here, right? We, like, that, just the magnitude times the unit vector is the original magnitude. And then if it's three times that magnitude, it would be three times both sides, three times the original magnitude. 
which is just three times the original vector. Yeah. But I did this. I was like, like, like the first thing that I did was the, the, the second part that I said here. Find a vector three times that magnitude. I was like, okay, well, I need a unit vector. And I went and got my unit vector. And then I was like, well, it needs to be three times the original here. So it needs to be three times that times that. And so I went, okay, so three times root 89 times 8 over 89, 5 over root 89. Uh -huh. And so then that comes in and we get 3 root 89 times 8 over root 89 comma, 3 times 5 times root 89 over root 89, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. And then I get 3 times 8 is 24, 24, and then, <laughs> oh man, I should just multiply, and so yeah, that's tricky, you gotta listen to what they say. Now if they say, of magnitude 3, well yeah, then you're gonna need to go down to the unit, but then it would be easier to go get the unit vector and then multiply that by three. But if they say three times the original magnitude, well, that's just three times the vector itself, right? Because you're, because right, like scaling triangles, right? Whatever this is, if you multiply this by three and you multiply that by three, then by extension that gets multiplied by three, right? Because it, it's, it's like day one stuff. We talk about scaling triangles, that's what it does. So you scale the magnitude when you scale the components. So be careful with how it's with what they're saying there, because you could waste a lot of time, like I did, doing this when it's unnecessary. Though there will be necessary to do this in the homework. It'll say find the unit vector, and then it'll tell you to do other things. So that's cool. Okay, finally, the last thing. This is number 57. And recall that the net force is the sum of all forces acting on an object, blah, 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 blah. Now here's something new. <clears throat> if the net force is zero. That is the zero vector. It adds up to zero, zero, right? If the net force is zero, then the forces are said to be in equilibrium. Okay? So if you have a bunch of forces acting on something and that net force is zero, the forces are said to be in equilibrium. So what they do is this. They, they're going to give you a bunch of forces and they're going to say, number one, find the net force. And they gave it a name for you, big capital F. I know we were doing F net, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and then they tell you B to find an additional force, this is why I'm going into this, find an additional force, call it G, such that, I don't know if I've done this that often, ST, such that, such that the forces, or, or I think it says equilibrium occur occurs. And then they're going to give you a bunch of vectors. What's and equilibrium? Oh, oh okay. okay. Equilibrium is when the net force. So in other words, they're going to give you a bunch of forces. And we're going to do this just now. And then you need to find an additional force where everything equilibrates. Okay. So like for instance. It's a fun word. For instance, like if they gave you one force in the I hat direction and one force in the j hat direction. So they gave you the force one, zero, and then they gave you the force zero, one. What would the net force be? Uh, one, one. 
one, one. It would be what you get when you add them together, right? It would be one, one. Then, so that's the net force. What additional force would make that zero? Negative one. Negative yeah. one, negative one, right? Because if you have one in the opposite direction or the exact negative of it, then when you add those together, the net force would be zero. So in other words, zero, one, plus one, zero, plus negative one, negative one. All of those forces should be in equilibrium. They should give you, and indeed they do, zero, zero. Okay? Wait, so like they cancel each other out. So, so that it cancels, yeah. Won't G just be negative F? It should be. It should be. That's that's that I will I will sign off on that. But the way they say it, right, they don't they don't tell you that. That's the that's the what you just figured out is what you're supposed to figure out. Okay, so let's do this quick example here. And then I can let you guys go. So then what they do is they give you forces. They say F1 is equal to 4 comma 3. They say F2 is equal to negative 2, negative 3. And they say F3 is equal to 5 comma 2. So, what's the net force? Okay, so uh, did you do that? I'm not doing that. You do it. It'd be 7, it's seven and yes. 7, seven two. 2. Yeah, 7, 2. Now, what's an additional force that when you add it to these would give you zero, zero? Uh, negative, seven, negative seven, negative two, there you go. Negative seven, negative two would be the additional force needed to equilibrate. You see this in physics problems all the time. This is very much a physics type problem where you have a rope pulling this way, rope pulling this way, rope pulling this way, and you're building a bridge, right? So what rope do you need at what tension to whatever? Well, it would be this thing. It would be the thing that makes equilibrium so that your bridge doesn't fall over or whatever. Um, the problem is, for number 59, they don't give it to you like this. They have a drawing, and it looks something like this. They give you a theta, and it's like 6. Um. And then they give oh, you, so watch, another phi, and then they give you like a five. And the thing is, you've got to be careful because this one's set up for the right thing. You could just take that guy, put him into here, good to go. That is not set up for that, you'll notice. So it would be... And mm. so you'll need to figure that out right there. Minus. Right. Or 360 minus. Or 360 minus phi, yeah. right. Or, or 2 pi minus that, exactly, exactly. And so, and you know what, they might even have given it to you right here. I don't remember. Maybe they gave you a fee. At any rate, the point is, you need to figure out this one in order to get it, right? Okay. That needs to be your big theta 2, or theta 1, theta 2. And then, what I'm going to suggest you do is, and this is, anytime you're dealing with vectors, almost every single time you deal with vectors in any kind of physics problem, it's almost always going to make your life easier to get it into component form. Because as you can see, I told you I made this big deal about this and then I wrote this down there. You're like, it's 7, 2. And you're like, it's negative 7, negative 2. It's easy. It's obvious. It's, there's, this is just seriously like a, a, a fourth grader could come in and do this, right? This, though, very hard until you just convert these vectors into that. And then you just figure out the rest. Okay? Okay, that's all I got, guys. You got the homework written down? Yeah.